How's it going guys? My name is John Hammond. Welcome back to some more Pico CTF 2018. This video is on the Here's Johnny challenge for 100 points. Well, it says, okay, so we found some important looking files on a Linux computer. Maybe they can be used to get a password to the process. Connect with Netcat shell to Pico CTF 4015. Uh, 40157, whatever. Again, your host name and port number will be different than mine, so connect with your thing. And files can be found here, password and shadow. So let's go ahead and copy these. I'll download them. Let's make a directory for here's Johnny. And let's wget these files. Blah, blah, password and shadow. Gotcha. All right, so let's check out what this password file is. Looks like it is just the root information here so the the information for the root user that's just fine so if you haven't seen this before this is what we can assume is just a segment or a piece out of the etc password file on a linux computer so if i were to check out cat etc password then you have all the user account information for the things that are on a Linux computer. So my root user here, and that, that has all those information just, just like this. The other information that is stored for kind of the login or user account information on a Linux computer is stored in etc. shadow. And it's interesting because that's visible from, or, or noted anyway, or referred to by this X here. Because you have the username in the first column, all columns separated by colons here, and the password is following in the next the next column, but obviously the password for this user or the root user isn't just X. So the X means that the password is shadowed, invisible in etc. shadow. So interestingly enough, etc. password is world readable. That means that etc. password, if I check out the permissions on it, everyone is able to read it. Like root only has read and write, everyone in the group has read, um, and everyone in the world or all user accounts, anyone has read access to it. But etc. shadow is not that way. Only root and the shadow group can read it. Everyone does not have permission to read it. So I would need to be root to be able to take a look at that. Um, I think I can safely head this. I'm going to pause the video to make sure. Yeah, this is fine to show because in the My Ubuntu system, the root user does not have a password and these other accounts are not things that can be logged into. So in my case, the exclamation point means that root does not have a password in this case. But if we were to check out the shadow file provided to us, which we were able to read, you can see that they supply here uh, seemingly a hash or some encrypted data uh, that represents the password. So we can crack this password or crack this information with a brute force methodology. And that's actually what the hints refer to in this challenge. If you check them out here, it says, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again and again and again. So it's referring to a brute force attack to test and crack this password, or really just guess it, essentially. So the tool to do that is, again, referred to in the title here, John the Ripper. And I've showcased this a little bit before. You can check out John the Ripper. Uh, they have a website here, a Wikipedia page that explains a little bit more about it. Um, I'm going to end up going for the like repository for the community edition, uh, John the Ripper Jumbo, Jumbo John, I think it is. And that has the GitHub repo that I'm going to go ahead and clone. And it takes a little bit to compile it, but this is um, what's necessary, in my, in my opinion, because you have more tools and more toolkits, um, like other scripts that will allow you to work with other different kinds of information, like a JWT, a Java web token, or uh, some radius information. So everything that will be converted to a format that John the Ripper, or simply John, can go ahead and read and, and crack and process. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and git clone this. If you don't have git installed in your system, that's totally fine. Just sudo apt install git, or whatever your package manager is. I'll git clone this. Great. Take some time. Let's check out what it says or how to install. How to install. See the install file. Great. All right. Install file. Is that even readable? It's. <laughs> Where is that file? <laughs> it's in source. I would think so. It's still downloading the stuff. Is my internet crappy? What the heck? Install. Oh, no, it would probably be in the doc, in the documentation. Install, install Ubuntu, maybe that stuff is necessary. I'll, I'll just do that. So move into source, get some dependencies, get more dependencies, get stuff if you have a GPU. Zoom in a little bit so you can see this bar. 
clone and build. So really just run configure and make. Okay. And then we can go ahead and run it. I'm going to wait till this downloads. So I didn't end up waiting for it to download. I just went ahead and copied <laughs> the file that I originally used for my for my real source files of playing Pico CTF. Um, so suspended suspended disbelief there. Sorry, you can you can get clone that on your own if you'd like. But once you have it downloaded, move into that repository and you do want to move into source, just as the installation documentation said. And you would run dot slash configure, and that will take a lot of time to do some things, uh, like lot of time so hopefully you can have some patience for that and then the next command that it wanted you to run was make and I think make install would follow that so they say make clean and make that's just fine I probably I already have this actually compiled and made and everything and but I have to proclaim disclaimer it does take a little bit of time so note that and once you have it all done you can just move into the run directory and then you should have all the files and information already completed for you like it's all compiled and ready to use so forward slash john is the john the ripper program if i run this it's just john and it needs some information but we don't have files that are currently in the format that john the ripper can actually read and process so let's check out what our options are and I'm going to point us in the right direction, that we have a utility called unshadow. And unshadow, when it's given a shadow file and a password file, it'll convert into something that John can read. So we can use the password file and the shadow file that's been provided to us from the Pico CTF challenge to begin with, and go ahead and create something. So let's move up a directory and work with the password file, move up a directory again and work with the shadow file, and this output is now the format that John can read. So let's go ahead and put that in, I guess, this directory. That's totally fine for us. Let's just use, yeah, um, Pico user dot text and that's totally fine we'll give we'll end up giving that to the john file john can actually just take that as we want it to as pico user and it'll get started running uh dot slash john sorry and what this method is going to do is simply brute force um i didn't expect it to get it that to get it done that quickly <laughs> um the other methodology that you could use is a dictionary attack. So the dictionary attack is when you're using a dictionary, right, of passwords or potential things that it could be. And that is what the next hint is referring to when it talks about the RockU file. RockU, if you check it out, Google it a little bit, RockU is a password list, RockU text, or RockU password list, and that file is ginormous, it's huge, um, I don't know if I, it's actually going to take three minutes for me to download this thing. You can find it online and I would recommend downloading it, but it's literally just a plain text file of all, a bunch of words, a bunch of English words. Let's see if I have it. I know I do because it's got to be in the, yeah, let's copy it into this directory. And if I were to cat out rocku.txt, it's a bunch of words or potential passwords or stuff that it could be um, used as a password. So Let's go ahead and try that. Let's use John with Pico user.txt, and you can say tac tac word list equals rocku.txt. But it sucks because I'm running this already. Um, tac tac show, I mean, need tac tac show at the beginning. There. Do I have a john.pot file in here? If, if you end up running John twice, and you're actually accidentally kind of not able to view the password that you want to see that you've already, for whatever reason, like uncovered, you can go ahead and remove the john.pot file that's in that directory that you're working with. And that's kind of John's save file. So it won't, it won't not do what it's supposed to do again. It'll go ahead and, and run the process that you would expect. So remove the john.pot file and you can go back to testing and stuff that you were doing before. So again, John the Ripper found the password is kiss me to the root user. It may be different for yours. So now that we know that, we can go ahead and go back to the original challenge prompt that's explaining to us like, oh, this is something that we may want on the service here. So let's go ahead and copy this netcat command to use the username as root to log in with, because that's what we know what's in the shadow and password file. And the password that we now know is kiss me. We enter that, and we get the password just like that. Let's go ahead and make a get flag script out of this. I'm going to echo root, and then I'm going to echo kiss me. I'm going to pipe those into 
netcat just like this, and I'm going to cut this with the first field of spaces, but I'm going to reverse it first. So the first field essentially becomes the last field, but now I have to reverse it again. So I've just cut out only the flag that I want. Cool. Interesting technique, right? But that's how we can just avoid some new line characters, just put together some echo inputs and give that to the, the service that we're connecting to and retrieve that column that we wanted from the flag. So nano get flag dot sh. Paste in that quick one-liner for us, mark it as executable, redirect that to flag.text, copy it, and submit it for 100 points. Awesome. Hey, I want to give a quick shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. You're the best. You're the reason that I keep doing this and the reason I wake up in the morning. Stuff like that. Hey, $1 a month on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of every video. $5 or more on Patreon will give you early access to all of the videos that I release on YouTube before they go live because I like to record in bulk, get a backlog of content, and then gradually release it from like YouTube scheduled stuff. So... If you did like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Link in the description to join our Discord server. It is a cool community full of CTF players, programmers, and hackers. You can hang out with me, other cool people, other really smart people, really smarter than me, that's for sure. And we'll tackle like, a lot of capture the flag competitions and stuff, other online tasks, like whatever puzzles, online alternate reality games, just cool stuff, man. Come hang out. It'd be awesome. Sweet. Love you guys. Hope to see you on Patreon. Hope to see you in the next video. Peace.